Hey everyone, Matt Basarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today to do a little wet shave review of our King R Emporium shave soap in the new CK6 formula. And we'll also take a quick look at the Gillette Red Tip, talk all about it. Let's get started. Okay, I am just finishing lathering up here with the new CK6 formula from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. And this is our signature King R Emporium um, shave soap. It's exclusive to Razor Emporium. It's not obviously made by us. We have our own soaps, but this one's made obviously by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements down in Casa Grande, Arizona, about about an hour south of, of Phoenix, where we're at. Um, I've used the CK6 at home, but this is I, I wanted to do a review of it on camera. Very, very, very um, thick, creamy lather from this new formula. It's definitely a, a, a big improvement on the normal um, Phoenix Artisan formula for their soap base. And you can see it just, it feels super, super cushiony, super um, slick and thick. And this is some, th this, this feels heavier than, I always tell people whipped cream consistency. This is heavier than whipped cream. This is like heavy cream. Uh, it's so, I mean, this is like what comes out of a, um, can of foam. It's so dense, this lather. And it's because of all the fats he puts in it. Um, got the fat, baby. And that's the big thing. I think that, let's see if he has it on here. Um, Cocomate. Is that Cocomate? Yeah, Cocomate. Shea. Um, Potassium cocate, cocoa eight. Um, I mean, gosh, there's just a list of different butters. I can't even pronounce some of these names. So, yeah, there's just a ton of different fats and butters in here, which is why it is such a creamy lather. And he charges a premium for, for it because of the amount of you know premium ingredients that go inside of it. Um, let's get loaded up, and we'll keep on talking here. We're gonna use a Gillette red tip today that was redone in our shop with the premium rhodium finish, which has this just really nice, ultra shiny um, finish to it. Definitely a lot more shiny, a lot more polished and perfected than what Gillette issued the razor as. Now we got a Paul Silver blade, of course. So, King R, I get asked sometimes, what's the story with King R? Why is it called King R? Why does it have my, my face on it in my vein? Is that why? And the answer is no. Uh, it has nothing to do with vanity. Um, the project started years ago when Doug and I kind of first met and he moved to Phoenix from back east. I think, I think he was in Massachusetts. And uh, we got together a couple times and um, he said to me, this is back when it was How to Grow a Mustache. He said, I really want to make uh, a soap for you. Let's do an exclusive soap, like a, a collaboration. I said, hey, it's a great idea. I'd love to. Uh, at the time, I'd also done a, a soap with WSP called Connecticut Yankee that was based off Williams. So I said, great, uh, let's do it. And he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, you know, I always would love to do a soap that was a soap stick that would fit in the Gillette tins, like, you know, the old Gillette combination sets would have a, uh, a tube for a little travel shave brush and a tube for a travel, a travel shave stick. And so at the time, there was no shave stick on the market that would fit in those tubes, not even, not Arco, not Derby. So I thought, let's, let's make a smaller diameter soap stick and make it fit in there. So he said, great, I, I think I can do a mold for that. We can do that. 
And then he said, well, what do you want it to smell like? Well, I said, well, let me give you an original soap stick. Let's make it smell like, you know, however Gillette originally had it smell. And I happen to have a really good one that was preserved um, and not completely dried out and turned into chalk. And so Doug, I guess, warmed it up and heated it and kind of got some of the, like a core sample or something, kind of really took in the original Gillette smell. And that's what it was based off of. And so that was kind of the inspiration. And we had soap sticks for the first year or so, and then we offered it in the four inch puck, and then we offered the aftershave as well. But for whatever reason, um, several years ago, J Doug decided that the production of the soap sticks just was not cost effective uh, anymore, and so he stopped providing those to us, and it wasn't any, you know, animosity about it. I was a little disappointed, of course, but I understand he has his costs and, his, you know, to produce the item and sell it to us. Um, but we stuck with the, the scent. The scent was really, really popular. And the scent has uh, lavender, or sorry, not lavender, cedarwood, rosemary, patchouli, and bergamot, which is like Earl Grey tea. I've had a lot of people compliment us on the scent. It's really unique, very old timey but not like a barber shop. It's definitely its own thing. Um, and in terms of the label, I have this giant uh, Gillette promo display here as to, to tell you or show you the, you know, the analogy here. The label is based off of the Gillette label because obviously the whole concept is based off of a Gillette soap stick. So it happened to be um, the packaging scheme was the 1930s packaging scheme. I don't have a giant blow up of those blades, but if I did, you would see it's green and kind of a green and white, and it's kind of faded now, so it's kind of green and kind of off-white or, or aged parchment kind of look. Um, but it, all of Gillette's advertising always had King Gillette's you know, picture here. And so what we did is, instead of King Gillette's picture, which is I'm sure a trademarked image, we put my picture, and again, not because I'm vain, but because it was based off Gillette, and rather than it just be my face, which I think on its, if I left it just my face, it would be a little vain. We put a silly mustache on my face to, to tell people it's tongue in cheek, and it's, you know, I'm not trying to make myself look like Gillette, just more of a stand in for Gillette. And uh, we even put the signature, trying to make it look as similar to the King Gillette signature as you see there, and, you know, some different typefaces to get pretty close. And instead of it saying King C. Gillette, which of course is again a trademarked, I'm sure, image or, or likeness or whatever, we said, well, King R. Emporium almost looks the same. It takes up the same amount of space. That's why we call it a King R. Emporium. And, and then and the same thing, like, where else am I, I going to put the name here? You know, the whole thing is done up to look like Gillette. And instead of the diamond and arrow logo, we put the uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements at the top with the uh, mustache with an arrow going through it instead of a diamond. And then in the world, you know, the word Gillette going through it. But uh, that's about the design and, you know, where it came from. Uh, I can tell you that this formula is a big improvement from his other product. And his other product is great as it is. So it's like going from something that's already excellent to superb. Very, very happy uh, with the performance of this soap. Probably one of the nicest soaps I've ever used. I would definitely put it in that category. And my razor today, I love the red tip. I definitely fit the category as the kind of person Gillette marketed the red tip to. So these were uh, part of the Super Speed Trio, a line of razors. And that was the blue tip, the regular uh, flare tip as we call it, and then the red tip. So for light, uh, light beards or young new shavers, people with a light, you know, uh, thin beard to was the blue tip, the regular is for normal guys, and then the red tips for people with coarse hair and heavy beards. And I certainly fall in that category. Uh, it's probably been about two, three days since I've shaved. So the different razors uh, predated the adjustable, like the toggles and fat boys and slims. This is from the mid fifties, and it's actually what gave Gillette the inspiration for the adjustables because it did so well. 
and people love them. Uh, they liked having that choice of different blade gaps, blade angles changing. So the red tip had the most amount of aggression to it, you know, the biggest blade gap. Um, it's mowing down my hair with ease, especially with this, my, my favorite Paul Silver blade. I have a British red tip at home. It took me a long time to find one of those after all the years of buying and selling razors, but when I got, I got one in, I decided to keep that one. People think I keep a lot of these razors for myself. I, I obviously have the collection. Those are, as you know, not, not for shaving. They're, they become more of an um, um, informational and historical piece and kind of reference piece now for the company. Uh, but my shaving razors at home, I don't have many. I probably have four or five razors at home. And one's a red tip, one's the Edwin Jagger, the, the, bar, uh, the laser cut handle that Neil gave me. And one is an original icon. I think it's icon number 76. And um, one's a fat handle tech. And one, of course, is my Rex Ambassador. So yeah, very much enjoying the shave. When we do the revamp process, we, we, start, we take these razors and we just start over. People think we just dip them in, you know, rhodium or nickel and that's it. <laughs> Guys, I wish that was all it took. I would, uh, I would have had a lot, of, a lot less pain, suffering, and financial investment, a lot less gray hair if that's all it took. No, it's quite involved. We take the razors and we chemically strip them, polish them, sandblast them, whatever's needed. Um, you know, take them all apart into pieces, start over, plate them, ultrasonically clean them, then reassemble. Uh, this guy, for instance, has the red tip that years ago we used to paint that with like Rust-Oleum spray paint when we were still kind of hobbyists in my garage and just getting started. Now we've invested in a nice powder coat setup and we've actually had a, a, a company do a, a, a color match off an original new old stock red tip, so it's an exact color match. It's great. Um, and the razors are put back together and assembled and lubricated and blade gap is adjusted to factory spec. So it's a, it's a very complete process. Um, anywho, I've said um a bunch of times. Great shave. Very, very nice shave. And we do make the, uh, I should say, Douglas at Phoenix Artisan and his team make a matching aftershave for the King R scent. I needed, I need a balm today. I've had, I've had a couple shaves where off camera that were not so hot. Again, guys, I'm trying new stuff all the time, new products, new razors, new blades, and sometimes I don't get the best shave. So I need a balm today. My skin needs it. Ah, oh, it feels wonderful. Now one little trick, sometimes I do at home, is I'll take my favorite aftershave or a matching aftershave. If they don't already have a balm, I'll take something like Parasa White, which has very little scent to begin with, and I'll mix just a drop or two of, of an alcohol-based aftershave. That way I get some of the aroma of the alcohol shave with the soothing qualities and moisturizing properties of a balm. So kind of the best of both worlds. Little little hack for you guys out there. That's all I got. Uh, King R Emporium, the, the new CK6 formula. It's been out for a couple months now. I think it's getting rave reviews and I was down in the lobby this morning and, you know, looking at the shelves, like, what am I going to review today? What am I going to talk about? And um, I've had so many new things on recently. I was like, you know what? We haven't done the, the CK6, and I'm glad we did. What a great feeling. Super slick, great post-shave feel, um, great performance. And, of course, the smell is very one-of-a-kind, very unique and exclusive to our store. Um, the Red Tip performed great. I love it. It's not even that aggressive. If you are someone who uses the adjustable Gillette razors, it's equivalent of like seven, eight, nine. That's what Gillette said, uh, but it's not aggressive. It's, it's uh, I mean, obviously it's more aggressive than a slant or a Mercury 34 or a D D89, but it's, it's probably more like a slant maybe in some regards, um, or maybe a progress or something turned up maybe halfway or two thirds. So it's still very manageable. I love the weight and the feel of it. So. 
Uh, great razor, great shave today. That's all I got. If you enjoyed the shave, if you have something to say, uh, leave a comment about any of this, the red tip, the CK6, Gillette. And if you do leave a comment, you're entered in to win this, the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. Um, we appreciate you stopping by. Share this video with your friends. Like this video. Uh, click the bell to get notifications of new videos we put out. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks, guys.